of going with 12 volt rather than the how, because there's so many different options. But the question is, why maximize 12 volt usage rather than using inverters and everyday 120 volt systems? Well, in emergencies, you most probably don't have 120 volts available. Portable, you can have it available, but it's not as convenient. So if you have a system that works for both, it will be much easier to use this way. Your radio is designed to work from 12 volts DC. Using its power supply when there's no emergency or 12 volt, 120 volts available is fine, but in an emergency or for portable use, it's not necessarily the best choice. If you're using a laptop for logging or other radio purposes, you should also consider getting a 12 volt power supply to run it beyond its battery rather than having to use the standard power supply. And all of you saw the juggling up here. These are the power supplies to those two computers. Neither one is plugged in to the wall right now. Absolutely nothing's plugged into the wall up here right now. Everything's running off this blue battery box, including the television screen monitor. These are all running on 12 volt, and they're running on various uh, brands of power supplies. The television is actually an insignia television. It has its own power supply. It's a 12 volt. It uses the same plug that most routers use. So I have lots of spare router cords. And for all of our field day and other operations like that, I bring the router out for everything we do. We have a club router, you plug it into the battery box, and we have our own intranet. And if we want to hook it up, we can put it on a wider intranet. But this puts us completely off grid, and now the reasoning behind it. Conversion losses run approximately 20% every time that you plug something into an inverter. I brought a couple of example inverters in here, big 700 watt, a little bitty 140 watt. Most people try to find the biggest inverter they can find, and that's probably the biggest mistake you'll ever make trying to run a radio. And the reasoning for that will explain as I go through some of these slides. Some of them get repetitive because I was writing this while I was selling tape. <laughs> so I got carried away. But most inverters have a minimum 10% loss to heat just for nothing else. You can expect about a 20% loss from the inverter and then another 20% from your power brick because you're stepping it up again. So in a way to avoid that, if you go to the DC to DC, you're still having a loss, but you're gonna have much less of a loss. And with these, they are made especially for whichever brand of computer. So the one that I'm running Lenovo on is actually a Lenovo brick. It's made to run the 19 volts that this computer runs on. So it's made for maximum efficiency. Whereas this one is a universal and actually, that slide way too far down the road, okay. I've got a picture of the universal, it comes with multiple tips, it will run most any computer that you'd want to run. So it's about a $35 investment and you're able to power the computer off of a 12 volt system. The other thing that I do to them is as soon as I buy them, I cut off their plug and I put power poles on both ends. So I can still plug it into a standard cigarette lighter, but it's on power poles on the battery box. The way that I built these boxes, I can put power poles on and this one that's actually got the expansion on the top of it with a fused box. Most inverters claim 84 to 94%. Most of them on the outside of the package tell you they're 95% efficient. That is if they're running at their selected capacity, if you're running them for exactly where they calibrated but that doesn't necessarily work for everyone else. 
So like I said, you can count on about a 20%, you know, I'm not gonna get crazy and tell you you're gonna lose 30% every time. Whereas the 12 volt uh, through step up adapter is approximately 18% loss and I actually use a gauge over here for checking the life of the battery as we're doing that. So the 12 volt to 110 volt inverter with a 30% loss then approximately 20% from the AC back down to 19.5 volts is going to be, and as they say, inside the computer it's only charging an 11 volt battery. So you're doing major steps all around. It's hard to give exact numbers without knowing specifications of each piece of equipment when you're doing that, but it's normal to say you're wasting a lot of the battery capacity. And as I said, different styles of inverters. You know, basic plug-in. Biggest you're getting out of this is usually a 400 watt, and they lie because you can't run 400 watts. The 10 amp fuse will burn out immediately. I said I believe this one's a 140. For running your computer in the car, this would be the one that would be best to use because you're not going to be wasting near as much trying to make the full 700 watts. Whereas this one is made to bolt in, I've got jumper cables on it because I use it for portable uses. But the only time that this is worth anything is if the engine's running because otherwise you're draining the batteries and you're never going to start the vehicle again. But DC to DC converters are often above 90% efficient when operating their design load. So if you buy one that's made for the job, like I said, for the laptop, you buy the one that's matched for that brand, it's made to put out the correct wattage for the computer. And it's going to be the most efficient that you're going to get. And it said the, the universal will do anything from a small laptop up to a 90 watt. And one of our club members keeps complaining because his calls for 120 watts. I said, you're not going to be able to run on it, but when you shut the computer off, it will recharge the battery on the computer. It will not run the computer from this, but when it's not operating, it will recharge. And that's the picture of the Universal that's down here. And it's convenient because it also comes with a USB port on it, because that's one of the things I never added to the battery boxes when I built them, was USB ports. So this gives you a place that you can charge a phone or something else off of it. But it comes with a myriad of tips to fit almost any brand known for computers. And I've never had any problems with them at all. Matter of fact, this is my second one that I gave one away to somebody. I had to buy a new one and just put that one together this week. As I said earlier, DC inverter laptop charger efficiency, you know, 80% when you're coming off the wall. So charge a 90 watt to your laptop, it's gonna consume you know, 112 to 115 watts from the battery. Whereas coming from the wall, you're gonna use 140 watts to do the same charging. And this is actually the equation that explains you have an 80% efficiency on the DC to AC on the big inverter, and then you have an 80% efficiency on the power brick. When you combine that 0.8 times 0.8, you've only got 64% efficiency. You know, you've taken massive losses. So if you only look at the inverter losses, you lose you know, about 30% in a 95% efficiency inverter because the 95% inverter has the maximum efficiency of 95% if everything is at its perfect parameters, which is impossible to tell because you don't know what parameters they set when they did. They also become noticeably less efficient when not under the optimal size load, which is what I was saying here. If you're gonna run your laptop in the car, you don't have to keep the engine running with this one because it's gonna draw enough to run the laptop. Whereas this big 700 watt is going to continue to draw until it makes 700 watts. So you're going to have a much lower efficiency on it. If you do use the inverter charger combination, keep in mind that there's still a significant current draw from the battery, even if the laptop's turned off or the radio is in standby or receive mode. The combination will require a significant idle current because you're still producing the power and it's producing heat constantly. 
It can be as low as only 5% efficiency at night if you're running just a single 100 watt light bulb off this thing or running your radio, just stand by listening in a situation. You're constantly powering the system, but you're not drawing near the power that it's putting out. And that was all that I had on that. Let's see who I am. And I said, it's, this is more on why I do these things than how, but as I said, I made it a point to buy a television that I could power off 12 volts. It doubles as a computer monitor. And as I said, I can bring it up here and uh, come on. question for you. Yes, sir. So are you running one battery or do you have multiple batteries for, for the different parts? This is actually one battery box. It's got six 18 volt or 18 amp hour batteries in it. Okay. In parallel. But here on the screen you can see that down here in the corner that it's plugged in and powering, but there's absolutely nothing plugged into the wall back here. It's all running off the box. And so when you connect it, you, you're stepping up the voltage to what, 19, 20 volts for the computer? For the computer, they, these would draw at 19, yes. Okay. But they're, it's drawing at 19 on a converter that's made to put out 19 for what it's right. made. Whereas this is going to put out 140 watts. This only requires 85 watts. Right. So that's all that the brick is putting out is 90 watts max. So there's much less waste. And on these 144 amp hour boxes, we operated field day, I guess it was four years ago. On four of these boxes, we ran every radio and every computer over at the Red Cross on nothing but these boxes for 24 hours. and had little or no draw on them. It was really hard to tell when I was charging them that we'd done anything to them at all. And, you know, a full field day is a lot of time transmitting. In theory. <laughs> you were there. In theory. <laughs> you were there. We, we didn't plan a bit. Luke, did you monitor the voltage on the battery before and after the, that run? Actually, that's what I use these for. It monitors constantly. Okay. Um, since most radios are designed for 13.8 volts, do you see any power loss on transmit? No, we haven't. No, we found that they were running the same as they were off the power supply for the transmit. We also discovered when we were using these to check that most radios are telling you that they're running 20 amps for transmit. And as we sit here and watch, they're running much closer to eight. Well, that's what I found in some testing I did at 13.8. They pretty much drew the rated current. And as you lower the voltage, the rated current draw dropped off very fast, and the RF output power dropped off. As right, well. and that's why I built the boxes at 144 amp hour rather than using the individual 18 amp hour batteries. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with those batteries, but by balancing that load across, it doesn't draw down near as quickly. Nope. And that's why we didn't have an appreciable loss. We were still well above 12 volts at the end of the field day. The, the other point you might make in that conversion from DC to AC is a pain. Okay. Yes. It is. It <laughs> One is. of the reasons why it's so inefficient, particularly if you want good fidelity on the waveform. So. Well, that, then that brings the other problem is, depending on the inverter, oh, yeah. you, you may never hear signal <laughs> right. because the inverter puts out so much noise. Yeah. I've got a 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 12-volt radio shack inverter that broadcasts like a, a, a beacon on, on two meters. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's another big problem. In fact, it was the year that we did all of the battery boxes. I had brought them all out there so we'd have them, but we were going to run off a generator. Only the generator had a burnt diode. 
<laughs> and we had to shut that down because nobody was transmitting. <laughs> Another question for you. So, can you run this system like at your home station, so you're completely battery powered, but they also have a, either a solar or some kind of a wall charger that's sort of maintaining the battery? Right. Battery? And and for running it for the home system, this TV stays on a power brick. But as soon as power goes out during the last three hurricanes, all I do is reach down underneath pull the cord up because I keep it plugged in battery box underneath the table, plug it into the television and the television's back on and I'm watching the news to see what's going on around me. Right. Obviously you're, you're watching off the air signals. Right. Actually, during Laura and Delta, I was watching cable. Because the electric have, was out but the cable wasn't. You don't have sunlight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and that, you know, we laughed at that because same poles and their running lines are all parallel. Why? <laughs> is it a fiber optic system by chance? No. We, we're still all copper. Do you know the name of the company? It's Spectrum. Spectrum. Formerly Time Warner. <laughs> it's the first good thing I've heard about them. <laughs> you won't hear me. <laughs> I'll look at this box. I'm sure it was a complete and utter accident. So, so that, what's that box called again that, that uh, steps it up from 13 to 20 to 19? It depends. There, there are a couple of different brands. for losing today. As I said, there are a number of different ones. Let's see. Well, you're just searching what? Computer car charger? Or, yeah. a, or a computer charger for yes. your car? Yes. Okay. And you can actually choose by brand here and it will pull them up. But there are a number of various ones that are replacements. Like I said, that Outtag I've had really good luck with. I'm trying to remember what brand is on this one. What have you got is Outtag? And this one is Power Plus, PWR Plus. And they do them for individual brands. Okay. So you can get a Dell, a Lenovo. But, you know, 
the average price on them is thirty to thirty-five dollars. You know, yes, like I said, that universal one is handy because if you have more than one computer, you can just change the tips out. Have you done any testing to determine uh, what the maximum discharge voltage you can go to on the battery pack and still have good performance in your system is? We have not been able to run one down far enough in what we were doing, but you know, when we were doing it with single batteries, we found that we could get down to approximately 11.6 uh, before we started having degraded performance. And, and the charge voltage of that battery is what, 10 volts? No, those are 12 volt batteries, so you get, I mean? you get 13.8. So you could discharge it how far down? I don't usually let them get below 11, but okay. these very seldom get that far because I don't use them for extended periods in these big boxes. Most wet cells can be run down to about 10 volts safely. Safely, yes. Okay, so, all right. Um, comment one is that depending on the battery you've got, radio computer you've got, it may run on 12 volts. It just won't charge the battery. It depends on what it how many watts its charger has to be? Well, it really has to have, yeah. You know, a lot of the bigger Dells especially run 140 watt chargers now. And when you plug it in, it's going to tell you you've got the wrong charger. Yep. It's going to tell you that it won't charge while you're using it, which is all well and good. It actually runs off the power supply. Yep. When you shut it down and leave it plugged in, it charges the battery back up if it's used the battery in the background. Yeah. Very slowly. But with Dell, it does come with the caveat that when you put a lower power supply on it, it also throttles your processor. So I have learned my lesson and I use the battery until it runs low and then it's time to recharge. And you can turn that off in the BIOS on most of those. So it just depends. Okay. Have you ever thought about doing a 24 volt system and just dropping it all down to 12, actually to 13.8 and then your 19 volts becomes a little bit easier to develop. And the reason that I use what we have in these boxes, the, the toolbox was a complete and utter accident that I found it, and it was the cheapest uh, toolbox you could buy. Okay. I actually bought the box on a daily deal somewhere, and it was somebody selling it through Sears.com. Okay. And the boxes the day that I bought them were on sale for $18. Oh, oh, oh. So I bought two boxes because they were cheap toolboxes. Got them and they were pretty good. <coughs> well, no, they were a decent toolbox. It was two weeks later when my boss, who then worked at Total, came home and said, they've got a whole lot of batteries out there after Hurricane Harvey. Yeah. And it's all of these batteries have been cycled once and they change everything on their emergency systems out immediately. <laughs> Well, at that time, he was working out of a control room outside, so he drove around all day monitoring their construction people. Told him he could have all that he wanted with one rule. You can't sell them. So he literally loaded his truck up six days running and brought home four pallets. And all of my time off was sitting there putting them on chargers, taking them off, putting them on load testers. We had 80% good batteries at that point. This was stuff that they'd had like four years just sitting out there. He took everything they had. These were lead acid or like a? They're absorbed glass mat. Okay. But these are what run all of their backup operations in the plant. Yeah. And if it cycles once, they buy new batteries. They don't take chances. Yeah, I'm kidding. Whoa. But they can't afford to pay the fines <laughs> if something were to go down. <laughs> But I lost access to batteries when he got moved to central control and worked out of a control room inside all day. Luckily, somebody else in the Jefferson County Club worked at Total, and they finally got the word that they needed to go talk to somebody to get permission to get the batteries again. But when I got the batteries, the box has only been there for a couple days, and I had the tray sitting out, and I looked, and it was the same size as the battery. I started setting them in. Excellent. So basically, I put four rubber feet on the bottom. I bought I forget which website I bought those at. They're made for amplifiers so that I can get it up off the ground. Cut a piece of plywood and drill four holes for the bolts so that they didn't hit the bottom of the batteries. And 
it is stuffed with the foam around it that the batteries were packed in the cardboard boxes with. So we have no shake or anything else. That's a nice job. And then, well, I'll be glad to open the box up. The most important part when you're putting the batteries in series is that all of your jumpers need to be the same length. Otherwise, you will start heating that box up really quickly. Approximately, what does that one weigh? That one weighs in right at 60 pounds. Okay. You know, I, I say, yeah, 60 to 80, I'm gonna say. Now, I built in a different box. I've got some big black boxes that are the size of three of those. I built two of those, and they're at the boss's lake house, and we can literally run half of his lake house on 12 volts up there. But I brought those to field day one time, and I brought them in, and we didn't have much problem. When it was time to take them out after field day, I was told to never bring them back again. They didn't like me. You know, we were all 36 hours tired trying to load them into a truck. I, I was not anyone's friend. <laughs> Even with ramps, you couldn't do it. Well, no, you had to pick the box up to load it in the bed of the truck. Ramps were not going to do it. We did use the dolly to get them in and out, but you had to pick them up to put them on the truck. But I went all out. This one, you know, all the power poles are out through the top of the lid, so you don't have to open the box. When I originally designed them, you had to open the top, and I had a pigtail that came out with the three plugs. But I've got it set up so that you can literally charge the box while you're using it. Your, your little uh, display there that shows how many amps you're using, or, uh, do you, does, the, does the wiring go from the battery to that and then split out to the monitor and the computer and the radio? Yes, I've got it hooked up to a splitter box here. Okay. So basically, I'm using that as my cable. I didn't bring an extension cable to plug it in. <laughs> so I'm using the, the meter today as my extension cable to plug into the box. Well, that's like normal stuff. That's just putting it together today, then. Right. Well, and, I mean, it seems like a good way to kind of monitor your battery usage. And well, and that's exactly what that is. Is I yeah. use it whenever we're set up just to check the battery usage. Battery usage, and you can look at it and see, you know, where we've drained the battery down to. What that we were talking about. That I don't ever let them get below eleven, but it's safe to get them down to ten for the battery life. Right. All I'll say is that if you have a radio check, 252, two meter rig, when it gets down to about 11 and three quarters volts, don't try to use it after that because it's going to go, it's going to be off frequency and everything else. So I don't know what they did on that particular radio, but it goes nuts. Well, and yeah, a lot of radios have that, that you know, if they're not drawing, enough power, it starts throwing all the circuits off. Yeah. So, thank you, Rick. I gotta go. Not a problem. Thank you for all the questions. No problem. You and I are thinking in the same direction. Well, and, you know, that's what I've been trying to tell everybody is, you know, if you're buying new equipment, buy things that will work 12 volt. You know, you don't have to go whole hog and buy everything at one time, but if you're doing this, plan it a step at a time. Like I said, this is a hundred dollar television. You know, but I bought it for the simple fact that I knew it had a 12 volt brick instead of plugging in 110 and everything was inside the box. And are they advertising it that way or how did, how no. did you figure that out? I actually went to Best Buy and checked all the televisions to find the one I want. Okay. I had bought my daughter one for college and I bought her a 26 inch because it fit into a shelf in her room. And it had a 12 volt brick. It was a 12 volt television. It was made that you could unplug the brick and plug in a cigarette lighter cord and use it in the car. And you're using that really just for television. You're not you're not putting your computer screen on it, or are you? Not most of the time. Okay. I do periodically throw the computer screen to it, but you know, I have destroyed more laptops than we want to count. I have four laptop screens mounted to a panel of plywood in the room, so I have multiple screens for multiple computers. <laughs> you know, that's just my normal setup, but. Because this older computer that I brought today doesn't have HDMI, I brought it and hooked it up to the television with the VGA. And as I said, you at field day, we always set up a bigger screen off one of the computers. And 
usually the computer I'm using for the server for our logging program, on this screen I run the map that color codes and changes every time you add a state, it fills it in. So we leave that running as a display. I said it's all hooked up to the box here. I said I'd be glad to open the box up if anyone wants to see how that's put together. But I have found going 12 volt native is just so much more convenient when everything goes wrong. You know, if there's a generator, it's usually making too much noise to use a radio, either audibly or electronically. So you can use the generator at night while you're running an air conditioner off of it to recharge the batteries and then shut down during the day and still have access to all of the equipment. Great, thank you. So, so you're really looking at, uh, with solar panels, to charge your batteries. Uh, my solar panels are 48 volt or 24 volt mm -hmm. output. And then I have some. And it will step well, down at your charge controller from that if you needed to step it down to the 12 volt. But you're losing by the, the heat that it produces. Well, from the solar, your charge controller actually has an output and it stabilizes. You don't lose very much. Like you said, your panels are putting out at whatever voltage, but the charge controller is going to control what you're getting at the far end. So if you're putting everything into a 24 volt system, again, you're still one step closer than 110 stepping down for the 12 volt. And if you're using a 24 volt system, you have a whole lot of things that already work on 24 volts because that's what you've got designed for the system. So it's the same theory. You buy things that fit the power of the system that you're charging. So if you're using a 24 volt system, you know, rather than find, you know, again, these power bricks are still 110, whereas those are made to step up and have a whole lot less loss. We're running right at 49.50 watts right now. And that's running two computers and the television. So, you know, that we're drawing more power than at least three radios. Can I just take a picture of it? Sure. Like I said, I'll move some of these things around and Open up the battery box if you want to see how it's wired. So that's where you're plugged into your box, right? Yep. Yeah, put as you throw power poles out through the front panel of the lid. need to be the same length because otherwise you start drawing lots of heat from one being shorter than the others. Okay, and that doesn't matter what 
kind of batteries you have, that <clears throat> jumper needs to be the same length. If you're running in series like this, yes. What gauge wire did you use? Uh, this is 8 gauge. I use four gauge lugs on them. Those are all literally stripped out one inch in the center, folded over, and then printed. That's one piece of wire down each side. But these are my engineering master stroke. <laughs> I said it was 100% an accident that the batteries fit the boxes perfectly. <laughs> Bob Ross said, happy accident. That's it. And these are the packing that came on the boxes when they were shipped. <laughs> and they make very good non-conductive shields. Well, we're going to a project now for the weekend. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And like I said, all of these same theories apply with a bio -ano battery. <laughs> Yep. It's just you're not going to be wasting half of the energy in the battery to heat and losses. Yep. I'm just using what was free. <laughs>